Okay, 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 okay. Here we go, here we go. As one crook shank, your one and only move swiftly speaker, former Division I college football player and current five-time published author and educator. Here for another Wednesday, here for another Wednesday's win entrepreneur tip. We do this every single Wednesday. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. What I'm all about, Mr. Innovative Teamwork Guy over here, is all about creating the entrepreneur mindset within your staff, within your work environment, and making sure everything is moving in a cohesive, cohesive unit. In which your team, your business, I want your business by listening to me, I want your business running the same way that a championship football team runs where everybody knows their role, everybody feels like they're part of the organization, and they're just contributing, contributing the best way they know how so what I've done with what it is I the work I do is I've I've been through it. <laughs> I've been through it. And I've done actually before I even get into today's entrepreneur tip, let me just make sure I send you somewhere before I even get started today. Before I before I guess before I even get going, I want to send you to makeyamove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com and get you an NIL bundle. An NIL bundle. This includes three of the five books I've written. First one, this is actually my latest book here. It's titled Transferring D1, a practical guide on survive on how to navigate the chaotic world of college athletics. Uh, I mean, not yeah, college athletics, more in particular college football, because I'm a former college football player, played for two programs and the high school and the youth program that I've been up that I've played for. Both of them are nationally known organizations. And I've seen a lot of changes, seen a lot of things go. go a lot of changes, a lot of things going on in that world and very knee deep and heavily involved in that world. Wrote a book like Transfer and D1 to help you navigate all the chaos that's going on. That's part of the bundle. Next book you're going to get is Make Your Move, a unique look into boxing, dance and entrepreneurship, where I speak on how important it is to go get some boxing lessons and some dance lessons if you want to maximize your potential as an athlete. Final book you're going to be getting in the bundle is The Six-Figure Athlete. And I say this all the time. I want to make sure I say it as much as possible. And for any athletes that are listening to me right now, if you're a parent of an athlete, if you're close to an athlete, just understand I want to reinforce the message that you are always one injury away from your athletic playing career being over. That does not mean that you can't be involved in athletics in some way, shape, form, or fashion, but your athletic playing career is going to be very short-lived. This is a book I got together with 10 other authors. This is a book about how if your playing career ended today to make sure you're prepared, all right? So you get this bundle. It's called the NIL bundle. Go to makeyamove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. And look up, look for the NIL bundle, and you'll get a copy, all a copy of all three of the books sent to you as soon as possible. All right. So, as far as today's entrepreneur tip, and again, if this is your first time tuning in, I want to make sure I give you a little bit of a backstory about how this works. The term entrepreneur, which was coined by yours truly, no one's this is my term, right? No one has no. You can look across the internet; no one is using the term entrepreneur. It came from the root word entrepreneur, which came from the other word, which you probably heard about, which is entrepreneur. All right, so an entrepreneur is someone that has a job, is working for a company, is is um say happy, not all the way happy, obviously, because they want to do some more, but it's happy with the kind of the connection that they have with whatever company that they have, that they're working for, that they're getting a job every two weeks for. So they they like it so much, they like the vision of the company so much that they feel compelled to innovate and create opportunities for themselves and for the company. And we want to hire people like that. I speak primarily to business owners, if you look, if you're listening to this on the Move Swiftly podcast, you'll know it's the number one podcast on innovative teamwork. And it's primarily about educating business owners on how to bring in and fill up their staff, fill up, fill up all of the, make sure all the employees are working very, very hard. And like I was mentioning at the beginning, they're working very much similar, a lot similarly to 
a high school football organization that is very dedicated to winning the championship. You want that kind of commitment amongst your staff. And that's what I'm here to help you guys do. And part of it is coming on here, talking about every talking every Wednesday, giving you just a tip, whether you're the employee listening to this or the employer that's listening to this, I'm giving you a tip on how to make it so your company runs in that manner, or you're teaching that mindset, or you're making sure that the mindset of the staff has that that thing where they're working every day towards innovating and making it so the opportunities are improving for themselves and for the company that they've been able to work to build that bond all right so as far as today's i'm going to i'm going to preference what i have to say so you guys understand that being an entrepreneur or being someone that has a a strong tie with the company that they're working for, yet you have aspirations of running your own business or running or doing your own thing, you will run in to folks that try to hold you back. All right, and they won't do it deliberately. It won't be anything personal, but they're they're gonna be folks who you meet in your line of work, especially if you're the actual entrepreneur in the situation, you will meet superiors and higher ups that don't share the same passion that you have. And you're going to have to maneuver your way around that. You have to think about it. You're going to have to make sure you know how you're able to, you know, just kind of get away from folks that you feel are holding you back. All right. So I'll give you an example of my own life. And I have a ton of them. This is why I've broken it down into every single Wednesday, because I don't have time to share every single situation that I, uh, that I've been a part of. But one of the recent ones that, happened maybe this was about five years ago i was a trainer at a gym named nine round kickboxing and fitness and this was early in my tenure there i was there for four years you know teaching people how to box in fact uh, the pr kind of the premise for this book came from my time as a boxing trainer at nine round kickboxing and fitness now i was also a ibo and if you ever heard of amway business the term that they give us business owners is IBO, which stands for independent business owners. And the Amway business has been one of the MLMs, which stands for multi-level marketing. It's been around for years. It's one of the oldest MLMs that, I mean, there's a ton of them out there now, but Amway is kind of one of the, one of the founder, one of the architects of the whole concept of paying yourself first, going out and working a job and, you know, running this biz, building your business on the side and all that kind of stuff. Right. So, there was a time in which I was an IBO, and several times in which I was an IBO, but the, the person that got me into it was one of my day one. Shout out to my boy, Omar. I, th I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that he's still a part of the Amway business, but I, I had just moved to South Florida. It was within like that couple months I was in South Florida in which I was working for the, I was working for the Miami Dolphins Foundation, and I was also doing what I was doing at Nine Round. And I said, hey, what the hell, because I'm running into so many different people. Let me kind of resurface and get this, you know, get this Amway business going just to have something on the side or just doing something because the products, I will admit, the products were great products, right? So here's what I did. Here's what I did. I would get regular shipments of the protein shakes, right? I would get regular shipments of the protein shakes. And I was gracious. It was actually, it was actually, uh, what happened was the gym owner of this nine round that I was at, he was a former IBO. He was a former Amway rep as well, Amway rep as well. So he used to go to all the conferences. He knew all about Amway and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that you have to do, if you've ever been with, uh, Amway is that you have to get people under you. You gotta, you can't just go to conferences and you can't just sell product. One of the things that needs to happen is you have to get, you know, uh, on downlines, as I believe is what they call it. You get them under you. So you're able to build your business or build your, you know, kind of your MLM and all that kind of stuff, right? I won't get into the details. I want to just kind of give you guys a framework of what I'm, what I'm, the main point of the framework of what it is I'm going to be explaining to you guys, right? So long story short, when I realized that this gym owner that was paying me every two weeks, right, when I realized he was an Amway rep, I had the had the assumption that he was going to be all about he was going to jump back in because the my upline was doing so well with the business. And because I was doing so well at the gym as a trainer, it seemed like a natural fit for him to you know help when it comes to selling the products or being an underline uh, a downline or whatever it was. Right. So I would have the protein shakes, I would have the protein shakes 
availed that I would get from Amway and I'd put them in the fridge at this nine round and they were flying off the shelves. I mean, the, the members loving it, you know, because again, they, they just finished the workout. They see that, you know, I'm not only just a trainer, but I'm also a businessman. Then they buy the, the protein shakes and they were buying them regularly. They're buying them regularly. And I offered, I'm like, yo, you know, because it's your gym, why don't we just kind of split the profits or whatever you become, you come in underneath me, however it is you want to work it out, we can work it out. And this guy just completely ignored, he brushed it off. He just said, yeah, that's your thing. You know, you just do your thing. And I was able to take all the profits from the, you know, the protein shake sales, which again, it's a good thing. Yes. But the the way you build your Amway business isn't just about selling products. It's about getting people underneath you. And the point, the point of me breaking all this down for you is so you understand when you are, again, what I would have preferred this gym owner to do was to say, okay, since they're selling, it's obviously helping you, which means it's going to be helping my gym, which is going to be helping me. So why don't I go and jump back in the Amway business or, you know, go back to the conferences or however it is you want to work it out. The bottom line is money was being generated and there's just opportunity that he just decided not to take advantage of. And the reason I'm explaining this to you is because this gym is no longer in business. This gym, the, and it's not because there was a bad workout. It was a great workout, actually is the gym's no longer in business is because of the mindset of the person who owned it. So as you're going out and you're trying to figure things out and you, again, you see an alignment, you see a great connection. See, for me, as a former football player, former high school football coach, teaching people how to box and, you know, doing that whole thing. That was something I'm very passionate about. I still in my mind, uh, owe a debt to the nine round company and just any gym out there that's primarily a boxing gym because it helped me build the skill set helps me kind of re-emphasize everything I talk about in this book so I'm always interested in hearing more about a, a boxing gym or a, a fitness studio, a fitness studio that has a boxing theme to it a cardio worker that has a boxing theme I'm always very interested in figuring out if there's some synergy or something that I can create some sort of partnership opportunity some sort of a symbiotic relationship that I can have with these places and you know when you have a situation where I can create revenue even if it's through protein shakes through whatever it is whatever merch it is I'm selling even through you know book sales whatever it is the right gym owner to work with is someone that doesn't just brush off revenue generating opportunities like he did all right so the point and the the way it translates into your world as you go about being an entrepreneur as you go about being and doing the things that you want to do make sure that you are able to maneuver your way around the folks that you see are going to hold you back all right. This is a very, very important concept when you're able to make it so revenue is being generated in some way, shape, form or fashion. you got to only focus on the people that are going to help you generate the revenue, even if the person who you would expect, like I said, I would have expected this gym owner to be all about and say, let's share the profits. Let's do something to boost these sales because you've already proven your form of con uh, proven the concept, proven that it can sell. OK. I was expecting him to be that person, but he was not that person. And ultimately, we saw the result, right? So I'll go back to what one of my favorite authors, Seth Godin, says, and I'll close you guys out soon with this. He said, when, when you're around people who don't get it, you need to quickly find somewhere that does. You do not get yesterday over. You do not get the time. The time is not unlimited, all right? So find people within your organization that get it. First of all, prove that things can sell, prove that you can go out and create revenue generating opportunities for yourself and for the company, and then find people that get it. The, the, the direct quote that Seth Godin has was something like when he was kind of talking about a story, you know, like I said, I'll close you guys out, close you guys out soon with this. He was painting a scenario in which he was talking about just, just a hypothetical. And he was saying about, he was talking like, if you go to someone with an idea and that person says, I don't get it. All right, here's what you do. 
You simply, you simply go somewhere that does. You move on and you get away from that situation and you go somewhere that does get it. So you're able to move forward and move forward with the vision that you have for your life and your business. That's what I did. That's what I was able to do. And I was able to move on from that point to where, again, I still have the ability to teach people out of box. I still have the ability to go out and sell protein shakes if I choose to. So that I just choose to, you know, now sell my own intellectual property and all that. But having the mindset and having the ability to shift and make sure you put yourself around people that get it is a very, very key piece towards becoming an entrepreneur, all right? Because you will run around, you will get around people that feel threatened by your work ethic, threatened by how much you're willing to put in to whatever it is you're doing. And those people eventually start holding you back because they won't be able to even and they may get to a point where they won't even be able to hide their envy and their jealousy towards you, all right? All that being said, main website to check out to dive deeper into my work. Make sure you contact me if you would like to like for me to come in and host a workshop for your organization. It's makeyamove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. Just hit the tab that says innovative teamwork. Schedule a call with me and we'll go from there. I'll give you the website one more time. It's makeyamove.com. That's M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E.com. One-stop shop for all your teamwork and your self-development needs. As one Crookshank, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker checking out. You guys continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.